Hey everybody, Chris Palmer here, and today I'm gonna put a spin on things. Literally. I'm gonna soup out my son's 12 volt power wheels. Check it out. Yes, I can be. Here's the plan. We have the original brick of a battery here. This thing, huge, heavy, probably weighs down the whole front of his vehicle. Not only does it weigh a ton, it sucks a ton. Takes forever to charge, has a runtime of like 25 minutes, and to replace it, 150 bucks. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna soup it up with my Power Tools battery. Now, I know there's a lot of videos out there that have shown you these methods. I'm gonna show you something I thought was pretty creative. It was inspired by another video I saw, and I've only seen one other video that does this, and it's using those auxiliary hookups that allow you to plug USB chargers into your batteries for your power tools. One sec. Where are you? Where'd it go? I'm gonna use this to hook up to my son's Jeep so that all I have to do when the battery dies is run over to my charger from my tools and swap out another Bosch Power Tools 18 volt battery. They're awesome. I love Bosch tools and I've got no affiliation, no sponsorship money, no nothing. Literally, I just really like them and their batteries are amazing. I thought how smart it would be to have this as the adapter instead of the original adapter where it plugged into the truck. Here's the finished product. Now, not the most gorgeous, but it is so functional. And the simplicity of it is, I can actually still use the auxiliaries on the back of this thing for the USBs and hook up lights to it or something silly. I'm not doing that just yet. But I've gone ahead and I've used a braided wire, hook up the positive and negative terminals inside this unit, drilled through two holes to make it look nice and clean. On the power, the positive feed, I have an inline fuse. Inline fuse, this is key. Without this, this will overload the motor and burn them out. I'm gonna have it in my description. You'll be able to click on it and buy it. So this is the inline fuse, 30 amp, literally is protecting the motor from blowing up. And I've ripped off the original harness. This is key because this is the only thing that's gonna allow you to connect to the vehicle and allow it to work properly. Just snip this thing off the original battery, which I'll show you how to open it up, and then just solder it onto the wires that you're gonna feed so the negative goes all the way through to the negative right back to this unit. The positive is gonna go in line with the fuse. So positive, fuse, positive, back on the adapter. So let me show you how to pop a battery apart. Because I've already done this, I'm basically working backwards in this video so you guys can understand. This is what it looked like coming out the side of the battery. So it has a positive and negative terminal written right on the plastic, right here and right here. Very simple to follow. Now, with a flathead screwdriver, you can simply break these up, pop them open, just like that, and now you can see where the wires existed. One feed went to here and snaked itself around all the way back out, and the other one snaked itself into here and had a feed. So all you're gonna do is take a couple of wire snippers, trim it off, battery's dead, it's broken, so it's not gonna give you any charge, you don't have to worry about it. Snip them off and get as much cable as you can out of the original piece. That leaves you with this harness. All you're going to do is create your soldered ends. For any of you who've never soldered before, it's quite simple. This is literally my soldering iron, nothing much to it. I've had it for years, probably picked it up when I was like 16 and I started trying to put my own electrical stuff together. Really ghetto and old, but it does the job. It doesn't take a master or anything special to make solder melt to wire. So I'm gonna teach you how to solder. I'm gonna heat this thing up and be ready to show you how to make the wires connect. So I've got this laid out and I've basically broken apart two wires that were already obviously soldered. There's the solder, there's the broken wire. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two and all you got to do is do a little twist and a braid. Now the one coming off the battery appears to be about a 14 gauge wire um, and the one that I'm using for the connection it's a little bit lower gauge but it's okay because like I said we're using this inline fuse to help break it. Um, I use these guys, they're my favorite, because they have all the gauges written on them, so you actually can just read what wire gauge you're doing to strip, and it'll tell you top and bottom. So it works really well, it's a great little tool, these little guys. So, put a link in the description, you can check these ones out if you want to. But uh, quite simply, all we're doing is getting the wires and we're twisting them together. So now with them all twisted and ready, I'm just literally going to take some solder out of the container here, okay? 
and soldering iron. And with them already twisted, it'll help half the battle. So now I'm just melting it on the iron. And you can see it immediately grabbing the wire. You don't have to do soldering. You can get away with the twisted wire and actually just doing a heat shrink over top. The reason I like to do this is because I, I, I enjoy to know that there is solder holding the wires together and making it all work. Okay, that's simple. And then we flip it over, just pull the solder out and just put it down on that side now. So here it is, totally broken down. I've taken out the three screws that were on the side of this port, one, two, three, okay? Take those out, and what you get left with is a positive and negative terminal. This one is clearly going to be my positive, so all I'm gonna do is solder my wire to the positive terminal right here on the back with these other wires that are getting the positive feed, and then I soldered another wire right here on the back side of the negative. And then as I soldered them, I then took the back half of the plastic and I drilled a hole through it to keep it neat and tidy so that the wire comes through and it pops through the hole. Now, once the holes are drilled and everything's good, I simply slid this back together. Very, very um, sensitive in these spots because you don't want to break your joinery or ruin anything to do with the circuit board itself. So when you're lining it all back up, just be careful that you're pushing everything in the right direction without causing any damage. So here we go. This one slides this way. Okay. And then on the top, you'll notice the clip is what's gonna help you align to help push it back together. And there's my little tether tab on the front. You see now the wires are in their holes, right? So I drilled the holes originally wrong, and then I re-drilled them to get them in line tighter with the terminals where they are on the inside of the cavity of the uh, plastic shell. Once that's done, literally just put your three screws back in. Like I said, finished product. It's done. It's that simple. I slide it in, and it's ready to play. Now, let's walk over and check out the truck and see how simple that was to install. Here's where the old battery used to sit, and because the plug's there and we've used the manufacturer's plug from the battery, all I do is swap that battery out anytime it's dead. Click, plug, tuck the wires back underneath the hood. It's just that simple, so that when it's all finished, all I have to do is swap out a power tool battery. No more waiting eight hours for a battery to charge. Think about that, eight hours. Rapid charger is on. Power tool batteries, 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever. It's quick. And now this thing, ready to rock. Put it. Holy, pull it all the way up. Crank it up. If you want to have fun with your kids, get a portable power adapter for your power tools, hook it up to an old power wheels and watch them light up. Try us out, hope this video helps, and check out the next video where I wrap rubber on the tires just to see how much more grip he gets. Thanks for watching, comment, like, subscribe, and don't worry, it's not all going to be about power wheels now.